In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can respond to the work of Petra Eriksson, who is an artist who produces this, these beautiful, bold, graphic portraits. Quite often, she combines one face from two different angles to create something that's slightly cubist, but definitely abstract and contemporary work. So here's one example. This is also another really beautiful one. Now the colors are, are very bold and quite separated. So, you know, there's a definite difference between each color and the blocks that those colors are found. We're not really going to be responding to that, but we are going to be combining the photographs using some digital photo editing. So you might be interested to know that there is a website which works to create a free Photoshop version. It's PhotoP or Photopia. It's Photopia.com. It isn't Photoshop, but it's a lot cheaper because it's totally free. I'm going to open two images that I've got of myself from different angles and I'm going to edit them in an Ericsson fashion. So you go to File, New, and we are going to create a background piece first. So I'm going to go to New Project. I've gone to Print here and I'm going to select A4 because I want an A4 piece of paper and I'm going to go to Create. Next, I'm going to find the two images that I want to edit. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and they are in my downloads. And I've got three photographs here, but I'm going to pick the two that are kind of the most different in angles. So I'm going to open those two. And here we've got two images of me. And I'm going to separate them from their backgrounds now. So I'm going to go on to um this here i'm going to hold down the uh, mouse and i'm going to go to quick selection it's doing an image analysis here and i'm going to select my face and i think hopefully ah it's selected me completely here so that's really good um, and that's because i am definitely a different color to that background so it's recognized me there and i am going to use the copy shortcut which is Control c or command c if you are on a um, mac and then i'm going to go to my new project up here and select that and Control v and that should copy the image onto that uh, background as you can see if you look at the side over here, you can see we've got layer one and background. So one thing that's important to know about Photop and Photoshop is that it all works on layers. So this layer, if I do anything to edit this layer, it won't affect the background layer. And now that I'm going to add another image, I'm going to do the same again and select this face. Control C, go to the new project, Control V. So anything that I do to edit this layer will not affect the layer below it. That's quite handy for what we want to do. So I'm going to select that layer and this gives me the little um, options to change the size of it. Now if that doesn't come up, go up to the top here, this top bar, and you click on transform controls. So if you select that, then you'll be able to change the size of it. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So I'm going to select this top and I'm holding down the shift key so that the um, ratios of the size of everything stay the same. If you ever do anything that you're not happy with, you can click Control Z. That is how you undo. But I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go up to the top here and click the tick to select that. And now I'm going to click on this layer, double click on it if it's not selecting it, and I'm going to do the same. So I want this one to be sort of a similar size. Um, oh, as you can see, I've forgotten to click select, so I'm going to hold down select, and that will keep everything the same um, sort of ratios. I want the two heads to be kind of the same sort of size. So good 
I'm happy with that. I'm going to click confirm. And I might lower it down so that the eyes are at similar level. Right. I think it would look better if this face was actually in front of that face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this layer here and I'm going to drag it over the top. And that will change the layer. So now I've got this face in front of the other one. I'm going to be selective here. So I'm going to think to myself, what areas do I want to keep of the face? And I'm going to use the eraser tool to get rid of any bits that I don't want. So I would like to see the facial features of the second face. So I'm going to go to the eraser tool or you could just press the E button. That's the shortcut to that. And I'm going to get rid of these bits of hair. So as you can see, I'm clicking that and I am erasing bits. However, you can see that that's not erasing the layer beneath it. And I would say it's always better to erase less rather than more at the start until you sort of work out what you're going to do. Hmm. I quite like how the hair is sort of coming together here. So I'm going to try and make that look like one bit of hair going together. And I think it would be, I can't really see much of that face. So I'm going to get rid of this bit. Whoops, what's going on there? Um, oh, hello. Ah, I didn't do that. <laughs> that was weird. I'll use the uh, control Z function to get rid of all of that. Nonsense. <laughs> Try again. Um, I think that's one of the issues with this being free is that it can be a bit glitchy at times, but I think it's, you know, it's still an amazing tool. I think Photoshop can cost about £600 a year. It's, uh, it's not, not that affordable at the moment. OK, so I've got that there. Um, hmm. Looking at that, I think it might be interesting if I overlap this sort of the center eyes to try and create um, a merged face. So I'm going to kind of just do that a bit more. I might change the size of this one to make it a bit bigger. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm going to click select. And I'm going to click E for the eraser tool. And here we go. Now I'm going to be really careful over here because I might be able to, oh, I might be able to get these eyebrows to sort of merge. Oh, I don't really want the eyes to be appearing. I'm just going to move this layer over again using the select tool. Just kind of eyeballing it a bit. I'm trying to get find lines like this line here might be interesting to try and get that to appear. You'll find with your image that there will be bits that just look like they could come together and look quite interesting. So you can always do several versions and work out which composition works best for you as well. Now, if you're not happy with how these edges are looking, I'm quite happy with the center edge, but I'd say this one and this one might need softening. So you can use different brushes as well. So I'm gonna go to the top here and you can see there are brushes with different hardnesses. So this one might be really interesting because it's got a soft edge. So it'll look like the end edge is blended. So let's do that. And I'm going to make my, um, you know, the square brackets tools. You can use them to make your brush bigger and smaller. So have a look at your keyboard and you'll see there's some little square brackets tools. And you can do that to make your um, any tool bigger or smaller. And I'm going to just brush that away. And you see that's a softer edge. So it kind of blends together. And that looks quite interesting, actually. I might bring it into the center. No, I don't like it in the center there. Mm. Yeah, I think I quite like that actually. Didn't like it at first, but oh, go. 
And now we've got kind of a, a merged face with some merged hair. Okay, so now we've kind of got a combined face, but the hues need to change, the colour needs to change. So I'm on this layer, I'm going to make one pink and one turquoise. So I'm going to go to image adjustments and then I'm going to go to hue saturation and I'm going to just tweak the hue use the slider you can see it changes and I think I think the closer one will be sort of a pinky color I'll go with pink or a sort of purpley pink and I'm going to increase the saturation on that one too and click OK now I'm going to go to the bottom layer and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go to image adjustments, hue saturation, and this one can be turquoise. So I think turquoise was this way. Um, yep, and I'm going to make this one a bit lighter. Mm, no, I'm not. I'm going to change the saturation there. So there you go. That was an experiment. It will definitely, if you are doing GCSE or A-level, it will go towards your AO2 for your experimentation um, and it will pick you up some marks and you can explore different compositions, combining different photographs together at different angles. And it's quite a quick way to do it because I could go back into these two photographs and start another experiment of a slightly different composition and I could create a page with you know five or six examples of these different ones from these photographs the two photographs you could do another new version and um, you know different colors in different styles you could cut out different features or you know you could move the layers about You know, you could move the layers about and and resize them or, you know, have them at different angles. You know, you could try anything to create maybe five or six different angles um, and compositions of paintings. So and just one last thought, you could also change the color of the background. So if I just select this background layer and um, there's not a lot that you can do with it while it's got the padlock on it. So just double click on that to release it and click OK. Now we can get the paint bucket tool. There it is, paint bucket tool. And I can select a colour. So if I double click on this bit at the bottom, I can select any colour. So I'm going to go with maybe like a nice, gone with two quite cool colours there. So maybe if I go with a warm orange or yellow. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll go with that sort of limey colour. And I'm going to go back to the paint bucket tool, paint bucket tool. And I'm going to click in this area and it should create something that looks quite funky like that. So I think, again, that looks a little bit more like the artist that we're researching. Um, so I'm going to save it. And you have an option here. You can save it as a Photoshop file if you have Photoshop. Um, or you can export it as a PNG, JPEG, SVG, GIF, uh, PDF, or other all these other files as well. So I'm just going to save it as a JPEG, um, and you have you know different size qualities will sort of take up more space. I'm just going to stick with it where it is and click save, and that will download to my computer. Have fun, and hopefully that helps. Thank you.